Guy Delosier, Senior Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. I'm going to talk about finding problems with interferences in a moving model. You know, we've got interference detection, things like that. It works wonderful, stationary models, but sometimes for moving models like this, it doesn't give you everything you need, initially at least. Let me check this out and find out what's going on. Now, let me just show you here. This model definitely has some problems. If I turn this thing a little sideways, I can see that I've got interference right in here. If I try interference detection now, go to the Evaluate tab, Interference Detection, and tell this to calculate, because it automatically picks up the entire assembly, there are no interferences. That's when you think, well, my work is done. No, no it's not. And let's look at this from a different perspective. If I go back to my assembly tab here, I want to use the move component up here at the top, move component, and I want to use collision detection, stop at collision. What's going to happen here when I move this? If there is a collision, it should show up and highlight what parts are colliding. So if I grab this thing and move this, oh looky there. Yes, absolutely. Let's move it the other way. So now this side's hitting. Turn a little bit sideways. So we do have a problem here that the that interference detection does not find. Let me cancel this out here and let's fix this real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this part up here. So I'm going to click on the part and click edit part and I'm going to get a fillet and I'm going to put whatever the default is on uh, the inside edges here. Right click and OK. And I want to now edit this one. Right click, edit part, and turn this little sideways, fill it, that edge, that edge, right click, OK, and exit out of the edit mode, and turn this thing back to the uh, front view. Now, let's see what happens here if I do move component again with collision detection. No collisions. Everything is working beautifully. So you think, fine, I'm a happy camper here. This is working great. And then the boss comes by and says, by the way, don't forget that this part is going to be running hot and fast. So we need at least a millimeter clearance between parts here of these yokes. This top one up here, this is the uh, uh, male yoke. This is the female yoke. So when these we turn these around here, we need at least a millimeter clearance so that these things don't expand and start hitting each other. How do I figure that out? I use the same tool as before move component command. I want to use dynamic clearance down here at the bottom. Dynamic clearance and I want to check between the male yoke and the female yoke. Dynamic clearance and collision detection use a lot of resources so it's a lot more efficient to select only the things you want to check to make sure they aren't going to collide or get too close together. That's why using this, these components in collision detection gives you the same option. We can use that and select only one or two or three components or two or three components, whatever. And the re resource usage is much slower. So it works a lot better, a lot more efficiently. So now if I resume my drag, grab this and move this, I get a little window that pops up there that shows me what the dynamic clearance is here. So go, yeah, that's less than a millimeter. Uh-oh, what now? Let's line this thing back up fairly straight. I can also, down here, I can stop this at a specific specified clearance. I want to know what's going on. So I want to set this now to one millimeter. Resume drag and grab this thing and, uh-oh, stop stop, stop, but it shows me that I am violating that one millimeter. 
So nice tools here to find what you're looking for. So don't forget those are there because when you got a moving mechanism, interference detection does not show you everything. Guy Delosier, Senior Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. Mm -hmm.